Hi, this is Dr. Tom once again with Causenta Wellness and Cancer Care Center. And this is part of our ongoing video series regarding cancer myths. Today's cancer myth is that sugar causes cancer to grow. Now this is something that you've probably heard or read countless times, uh, whether it's you know on the internet or in different doctor's offices. And um, what I'll kind of uh, set the stage in that, uh, there's pretty good research that points to the fact that glucose, which is um, the, one of the car, um, carbohydrates in our blood that is vital for energy for every cell in the body or almost every cell in the body. And glucose appears to be an energy source for cancer. And there's some very classic uh, papers look at these different pathways, but one in particular is called the Warburg effect. And basically it looks at metabolism of cancer and how cancer cells can use glucose to drive their growth or their metastasis. And so if you just read sort of like that one perspective, you'd be like, whoa, cancer, you know, grows off sugar. But if you take the time to do more thorough and meticulous research, in other words, look at all the available data, you come across some really conflicting or even confusing um, papers out there. And one is that there's some studies showing that table sugar, so sucrose, is actually toxic to cancer cells. So it does not mean that table sugar will kill every cancer cell. It means that some cancer cells, because of their genetic mutations, they may be vulnerable to table sugar. The challenge with that is those studies were done outside the body. So they have this cancer cell line that they grow inside of this enclosed environment and they expose those cells to some table sugar and the table sugar was, was deadly to the cancer cells. In contrast, we have things like purple grape juice, very high in dextrose, which is another sugar, which is also uh, can be cytotoxic to cancer cells. We have ongoing data that's being collected right now about some of the medicinal properties of honey and how honey can be toxic to cancer cells and even things like grapes and raisins, black raspberries and other fruits that have carbohydrates actually have anti-cancer compounds in them. So one of the challenges that we see from looking at this research is that a lot of these studies are done outside the body. So it's difficult sometimes to know, are these carbohydrate food sources, are they killing cancer because they're achieving a non-physiological effect or a supra-physiological effect in this isolated environment? So in other words, it's so much of that substance, of course it's gonna kill the cancer cells. Or is there something actually uh, medicinal in a therapeutic range that's feasible for people to try? So one of the ways that we address that, because we don't want, like obviously you don't want to take something that could harm you, but you also don't want to avoid something that could be benefiting you. So we look at very specialized uh, findings, so like different genetic mutations that um, the uh, labs uh, run these tests, so that it might be called somatic mutations or oncogenetics. They run these tests on tumor samples, and we do what's called a liquid biopsy. This is matched up with the tumor sample. And then we do um, other tests looking at the exome of the tumor, where we look at things like germline genetics to see if there's certain genetic predispositions that could be driving that cancer. And we t look at all this data, and then we sit down with different doctors and we come up with a plan that will be best for that individual. And one of the things I see circulating a lot is that there's this uh, metabolic theory of cancer. And part of the metabolic theory of cancer might be, hey, um, follow a ketogenic diet or avoid carbohydrates because they may be driving, uh, the carbohydrates might be driving the cancer spread. But what's typically ignored in many of these theories is the fact that cancer cells have a unique ability to undergo a very high rate of gluconeogenesis. And what that means is that cancer cells can take protein and they can take fat and they can convert that protein or fat into carbohydrate. So just avoiding carbohydrate alone is not adequate to starve out the cancer so that it stops growing or spreading in your body. 
What we have found that works really, really well if you want to starve cancer is to actually exercise more. And one of the benefits of exercise is that excess energy in the blood is used by the working muscle. So there's actually direct competition for that energy between the, your muscles that are working and your other um, healthy cells that are involved in activity versus cancer cells. And we've seen this over and over again, where in four to six weeks, we have people undergoing specialized exercise programs that result in anywhere from 50 to almost 100% reduction of cancer burden in their, in their bodies. So one of the nice things about um, the exercise model we have is that it helps your bones get stronger. It helps protect your brain and your heart and your lungs. It helps your muscles get stronger. So it doesn't really contribute to any negative consequences. So it only does all these positive things. So when people go through that, the first thing they tell us right away is how much better they feel within one to three days, they notice that they have better energy levels and they actually feel like moving more, which then helps them do a better job of using excess energy like carbohydrates in their blood or excess amino acids or excess fatty acids. And now there's less energy to feed their cancers or a cancer. So if you wanna know more about, you know, different ways of getting your body healthier when you're trying to deal with cancer, please reach out to us, go to our website, fill out a form and you know, schedule a time that we could talk through some of this stuff with you and help you to see what other options you have so you're not feeling trapped or stuck, like you, know, you gotta follow some restrictive diet that maybe isn't even good enough to help you with the conditions that you're dealing with.